Hi, I'm Christine McDonald from Rushing River Apiaries, and today I'm going to be demonstrating how we combine two hives. So you want to do this when you have one hive that is not viable on its own, and another hive that is queen right, that is viable, um, but that you're willing to kind of turn in two to one. Um, first, I'm going to take this box up here. This is the strong queen right hive that we're going to combine at a different yard. So for now I'm just showing a little bit about how to move beehives. Um, this hive is actually, it was a nuke coming through winter. It was on the weak side, so it had a queen, she was laying eggs, but it wasn't gaining strength as quickly as we would like. And so what we did was we put it on top of a really strong colony, of course with a queen excluder in the middle. So what we have right now is a good strong hive down here with a queen and a now strong hive um, up here, a little bit smaller because it was just a newt coming out of winter, but it also has a queen in it. So we're going to take just this box and we're going to take it to another yard to give it to a hive that has lost their queen. So I have stuff set up for my move here. I'm going to use an inner cover as the base of this hive. It's a little bit tricky to move 10 frame boxes, um, a little bit trickier than nukes. Um, I'm going to use this base. I don't want to take out any frames. I'm not going to pack them into nuke boxes and then move them again. We like to move our bees when it is cold or a bit wet, when foragers aren't flying, so you're not going to lose them. And so to make this as quick as possible, I'm just going to take this whole box, sit it on this inner cover. I've got a ratchet strap here already to bundle the whole thing up and then I'm going to stick a lid on top. This inner cover and this lid of course are extras because the ones that are on here need to stay with the bees that are staying behind. Okay, so I've given them a good smoking from the front and now working from the back I'm going to remove this orange box, stick it on my little wagon so I can haul it to the truck and bundle it up so that it'll stay together during the move. So This purple box is just our attic box. Uh, if you're curious about attic boxes, I do have a video about them on my YouTube channel that you can check out. So you'll see that we have a foil layer um, underneath our inner cover. That's nice for this. I'm actually not going to take that off. I'm going to keep it with them just so that those bees can maintain um, some of their heat. We do take that off for the summer. It's still early spring here right now, um, which is why it's still on. So I'm just going to take this whole box, sit it on here. We checked this box in the last couple days. We know that it's queen right. We know that it's the one that we want to combine. Now I don't need my queen excluder anymore. Okay, now that hive is close back up again that's exactly how we're going to leave it and I'm going to use a lid um, on top of this one so we'll just get rid of these bees so nobody gets squished here come on girls yep. and I'm going to do this up with my ratchet strap Ratchet strap makes it really easy for me to just pick up the whole box, stick it in the back of the truck and know that I'm not going to lose any pieces. Now you can see that there is still a little opening there left from the notch um, in that inner cover being up. So I'm just going to take a little bit of tape and cover that up so that no one can fly. This of course does leave these bees without any ventilation. I'm driving three minutes down the road, they're going to be fine. If you're going further, then you need to account for some air for your bees.
This tuck tape, by the way, you need some in your kit. See how easy that was just to rip? I can even do it with my gloves on. There we go, now we're ready to go. Okay, so now I have our strong queen right hive in the same place as my queen less hive. We have already removed the queen from this hive. When you're doing a combine, it's really important that only one of those colonies has a queen. You need to find the queen and remove her, um, pinch her, remove her, somehow get rid of her, um, or you need to be a hundred percent sure that there is no queen in the colony that you're combining. It is not a good idea to let them fight it out. Yes, queens fight to the death, but um, it could result in just injury or death to both of your queens and then you're further behind than where you started. Um, so make sure that you have one hive with a queen, one hive without, and that's what we are going to combine. You also want to make sure that whatever the reason that the weak hive is struggling is not because of disease. You don't want to be passing on um, disease from this weak hive into this perfectly good hive. Okay, so we know that this queen petered out over the winter. There's lots of drones in this hive. We shouldn't be seeing drones this early in the spring. Um, so we know that this was a poorly mated queen um, that is no longer in there. Uh, so we're not worried about passing on anything that we don't want to be spread. So I'm going to give them both a little smoke. And now again, because I'm doing this when it's cold, I'm going to do as much prep as I can before opening any hives so that I'm exposing the bees for as short a time as possible. And again, I'm just moving the entire box. I'm not taking any frames out. All I need to do this is a nice big sheet of newspaper. It needs to be big enough to cover the entire uh, brood box uh, with some sticking out around the edges, ideally. It is fine if you've only got half sheets to like layer two of them. Just make sure they overlap a little bit in the middle. So I've got my newspaper at the ready. Now this time I am going to take this foil off because we only want it on the very top of the hive. So I'm going to take the foil off, smoke the bees down a little bit, and then I'm going to lay that sheet of newspaper out on top of the queenless hive. This can be tricky to do when there's a little bit of a breeze, so we'll see how it goes here. <laughs> Some people like to spray this with a little bit of sugar water. That's a good idea. It helps to mask pheromones for a little bit. Um, it also, like, bees are happy when there is nectar present, so it just kind of chills everybody out while they get used to each other. We don't usually have a spray bottle on hand, and so we don't usually do that, and we still have good success with our combines. So. Here is my sheet of newspaper. I'm just gonna stick a little weight on that until I get the lid off of here. And here again, exposing them as little as possible, I'm gonna leave the foil on that hive so that it becomes the new top. Okay, doing this without things blowing away. <laughs> that newspaper is sticking out on all sides and I'm just gonna line my box up with the one underneath it there we go 
and I'm going to close them back up. There we go. So all that newspaper layer does is allows the bees to integrate kind of on their own time. So instead of throwing them together where they're forced to either get along or fight, um, this gives them time to slowly get used to each other's pheromones um, and then choose when to combine. And they'll do that by actually chewing a big hole in the middle of that newspaper. Um, I'll share a picture of what that looks like so that you can see it. I'll come back in about three days and check that they have combined, that they've opened up that newspaper. I'll find my queen to make sure that for whatever reason they didn't dispose of her and I'll make sure that she's still laying in her new hive. Then what I will probably also do is condense them. So I have another video um, and blog post on condensing a hive. So because neither one of these is a super strong hive, one of them has been queenless all spring, um, so it just has, you know, a, a small cluster of bees left in it. This one was a weak nuke that we boosted by putting it on top of a strong hive, but it's still not just a booming box of bees. So really, all together here, we probably only have one box worth of bees, um, including like the brood and the food to the outsides. So when I come back and check on them, I'll go through that condensing process of choosing the 10 best frames, pushing them down into the bottom box and leaving them in one box until they're good and strong and need that second box on top again. All right, thanks for watching.